Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we're talking about some of the biggest mistakes that we as anglers make in the late summer and what you can do to change those habits. As bass anglers, we all have the same habits. We tend to fall into patterns, we get complacent because we know we have spots where we can catch fish, even if they're not the fish we want to be catching. We all wanna catch a giant, but if we know we can go catch little ones, we usually just go catch little ones. So today I wanted to talk about four major mistakes that everybody makes this time of year and what you can do to get out of those habits as well as some of the baits that you might wanna think about to help you transition out of those habits so you can catch more and bigger fish during this period of the year. The first mistake, we all make it. And that is we go out on the water and we want to stick with our summer patterns. Maybe you were on a ledge bite. Maybe you were on a great frog bite. Maybe you were fishing offshore rock. Every time you go out, your bite is just a little bit less. Right, there was a big school of fish on the ledges and then there weren't quite as many and now you just get a bite or two. Or maybe you've already gone out and you haven't got bit at all. Same thing up shallow or fishing offshore rock. Whatever it is you're doing, if your pattern is dwindling, the angler in us just says, well, let's just stick with it. I can still catch a few. But what happens if you do that is the fish begin making their transition. And we've got a dedicated video to the fall transition coming in just a few days. So don't worry about that and I won't go too in depth today. But the fish start making the transition and if you let them go and you don't even try to stay with them, you try to hold on to what you had, by the time that goes to zero and you need to transition, you don't have a clue where those fish have gone because you didn't follow them through the steps. You'll lose them completely. And it is much harder to stay on top of where those fish have transitioned to, what they're eating and why they're doing it. So the biggest mistake, the number one mistake that I see guys make is hanging on to the summer patterns for too long. If you feel it dwindling, it's okay to still go there. You go out on the lake, still go to that confidence spot, still try to get a bite, but don't just sit there and beat on it. You need to start hunting and searching for what's coming next. The second mistake that I see, when we get into this time of year and patterns begin dwindling, most anglers want to slow down. So the guy will stop throwing reaction baits. You'll start seeing dragging a jig, dragging a Carolina rig, really focusing in on a shaky head or a Sanko. All good things. All great baits that can catch fish. Going out deep, drop shotting. These are all great techniques, but they are not techniques that will help you build a pattern across multiple locations. So it's really important this time of year that at least part of your day is dedicated to moving baits. Now, with that said, that doesn't have to be a 10XD and a big glide bait and a big top water, right? It can just be small swim baits. A three inch Largo Shad or a 3.3 or a 2.8 Kitek, these are baits that I have a ton of confidence in. I'll put them in the same category as a Ned Rig, uh, a drop shot, a tube. Speaking for myself, I'll put them in that category because I have that much confidence that when the going gets tough, I can get bit on them. So instead of hitting that panic button and going to a slow moving bait and just sitting in place, say I've had fish on a rock pile. It's fallen apart on me, I know it. So now I'm sitting there with a shaky head for hours, picking it apart, trying to get every last fish out of it that's not really doing me any good in terms of what's coming next, in terms of my fishing trip a week from now or a month from now. Instead, I'll go to that smaller swim bait and I'll fish that same place. Hopefully I get one or two, it picks them off really well. 
and then I'll start looking for where fish have transitioned to. And again, we'll get to that in a future video. The next thing that I see happen is a lot of guys, myself included, if I don't check myself, we like to fish the middle. And what I mean is I love to throw a 4.8 or a 4.3 Kitek when I think I'm gonna catch them on a moving bait. I love to do that. Uh, I love to throw mid-sized square bills. Uh, I love to throw creature baits, you know, a man bear pig uh, or a brush hog. Those are mid-sized baits. They're not giant baits. They're not tiny baits. Most of us have confidence right there. Same deal. As things slow down, I strongly recommend that you go one of two, two directions. If you wanna break out of this pattern, if you wanna change those mistakes, and you wanna change what your fishing is going to look like through the fall transition into fall, I strongly recommend that you go either direction. So either go smaller or go much, much bigger. Uh, on the smaller end, I mean, I just picked these up. This is where I go. The little Kitek, and this year in particular, that little Largo Shad, uh, just baits I have a ton of confidence in, but you won't see me throwing them on 10, 12, 14 pound line. This is where I'm talking about the middle. A lot of us like to stay in that middle ground. We've got a good all around rod. You can throw a creature bait on it. You can throw a Senko, you could throw a jig, you could throw a small swim bait. So we tend to just stick with that. If you see me throwing this, odds are really good. Even out here on Chickamauga, even out here where guys are power fishing. If I pick that up, it might be on six pound line, five pound line, six pound line, seven pound line. If I do it, I'm going all the way to the extreme because I want to maximize the number of bites that I can get. So if I'm going that's why you see me throwing so much BFS. If I wanna throw creature baits, I a lot of times go to BFS and I go to super small baits to maximize my odds to get the maximum number of bites. If I'm trying to figure out where fish are going, I'm not going to throw a bait in the middle that gets some of the bites. I'm gonna to go to a bait that will get all those bites, even if they're small fish, to help me build a new pattern. Conversely, don't stay in the middle it's also okay, especially as we head into that fall transition. And again, we'll talk more about that, but what you're looking for is not a change in daytime temperatures, not a change in daytime conditions at all. Watch your nighttime temperatures. As soon as there is a drop in your nighttime temperatures, just for a couple of days in a row, fall transition begins. Your day temps will be identical a lot of the time and that's what throws people off. The day you're out there fishing, it feels just like it did last week or the week before, but it's not. The night has shifted and that gets those fish moving. And in the daytime, you can't see the difference, but it's already begun and that's why you start struggling and losing your fish. So again, I either go tiny or I go full the other direction. As soon as the transition happens, big baits are immediately a player again. The tactical 210 wake that we just came out with, a big profiled bait, they will come up and eat that. That guy right there, great big glide bait. In the world of glide baits, it's not a giant, but it's a big bait, that's the sneaky Pete. These two baits are killer options as things start cooling off in the night and transition starts to happen. Here's why. As soon as the transition begins, bass will start pulling to hard cover. So fish that used to be in grass beds, out on the edges, they'll suddenly tuck up to rock, they'll suddenly tuck up to docks, they'll tuck up to lay down trees, they're on visible cover and that is much easier to target. So throwing a big bait, it'll work all summer long, but you have to cover a huge expanse of water if you've got a lot of grass. Once that grass just begins to fade away, just begins, some of those fish will transition to hard cover immediately, and that's much easier to target, so you can catch a lot more fish a lot quicker on the big baits this time of year. 
And then the last mistake that I see, and we're gonna talk about some more baits with this in mind, is that guys start to focus on low light. The bite starts getting tougher, you're not sure what's going on, so you think to yourself, I'll bet there's a good bite in the morning and the evening. I'm going to fish then. Well, first off, you're absolutely right, which is why it makes this mistake so easy to do. If you go out early and late, you will catch fish. You'll see fish chasing bait. You can catch them on top water. Uh, you can catch them on reaction and it's a lot of fun. But fish that are running bait don't really hold up as we go through the year because they're moving. What we're looking for is patterns that you can continue to build on into the fall. So the second we start to see those cooler nights, the second the grass starts to die back, like I just said, fish start pulling to hard cover. Docks, trees, rock, it's a big deal. You can fish the extremes, go tiny and go big, but speaking specifically about wood, so dock pilings, laid down trees, standing timber, here's a couple other baits. What I want you to think about, what I want you to process is that in the springtime, when bass are coming in and they get on stuff like this, they haven't been messed with most of the winter. Sure, there's guys winter fishing, but the bulk of people show up in the spring when it gets nice. So those fish haven't really been beat on and it shows. You can catch them on a lot of baits. This end of the year, as these fish begin to transition back out, they've been beat on all spring and all summer. So this is a great time for you to be throwing something different. The one exception is around wood like that, the jig will always be a player. Um, under docks, I love to throw that guy right there. Around standing timber or lay downs, I love to throw that guy right there. And of course, I'll link these down in the video description, but you'll notice with both of them, I put a Yamamoto, five inch double tail. It's got a subtle swimming action on the way down. And that I think is really key with the jig this time of year. The jig will always, always be a factor. That said, here are two baits that you should consider this time of year. These are baits that I've personally been playing with already in this part of summer. And I will continue fishing as we go on. So a lot of guys will stick to the creature baits that they're confident in, the baits that they throw year after year, the worms they throw year after year, a Senko, a shaky head worm, right? Baits that they know they can catch them on. But again, fish have been seeing these baits all season long. Will they still eat them? Yes, but not all of them will eat them. Consider doing something completely different. Show your fish a similar bait, but a bait that they don't see every day, and you'll be amazed the difference. Way more fish will eat them. Uh, the first one, this is a jackal honey nugget. Just a little different creature bait. You could Texas rig it, you can free rig it. Some different things you can do with that bait, but that's a great bait to pitch around hard cover. It's a different profile. Whew. It's a different smell and fish will react to it because it's different. The other one, the depths cover scat. This is another bait that I've been catching a lot of fish on lately. Think Sanko. You fish this guy weightless. It is a goofy looking bait. It's silly looking but you fish it weightless and you fish it on a Texas hook, Texas rigged weightless hook. So I like to put it on a four aught EWG. This is the mid size of the cover scat. I put it on a four aught hook uh, and you fish it much like a Senko, throw it out, let it sink. What I do notice, well, one, it's a different profile. So fish eat it. Two is that when I bump it off the bottom, if I just slow drag it, whatever. But this bait is actually pretty erratic. So I throw it out and I let it sink and it's got its little float down. But when I go to lift it, I like to actually pop it up off of the bottom and it really darts and moves and then starts to settle again. And I catch a ton of fish on that. So again, a, a weedless weightless bait and a weedless 
weighted bait, whether you want to free rig it or Texas rig it. Two unique options that I don't think your fish see very much of, unless somebody else on your lake is really forward thinking and is constantly trying new things. Both of these are not thrown anywhere near as much as a traditional creature bait or as a Sanko, and they will help you get more bites as you go through the transition. So again, just to recap, this time of year, don't be afraid to change up your baits. Either go tiny and go all the way tiny, go light line, small baits, or go the other way. Go all the way to big baits with a ton of drawing power, pull those fish out, or go different. Show them something they haven't seen, and that will make a big difference for you. The fall transition can be an awesome time on the water. This is where a lot of people start falling away because hunting season is coming. Guys start thinking about other things. And a lot of us, the guys who stay out here, we start to get our lake back, right? All of a sudden it feels like a private lake. You're out there all alone. And if you stayed on the fish through the transition, the fishing that's coming can be amazing. Hopefully this helps you guys out. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.